I say it time and time again that we are so blessed here in the state of Utah. Not only do we have all the access to amazing outdoor resources, but we have some really great art here as well. We talk about it on the last Friday gallery stroll every month here on the Mountain Morning Show. But right now we're going to be talking about the Utah Museum of Fine Arts and their curator right now. Her name is Leslie Anderson. She is a curator of European, American and regional art. She has won a national award for excellence from the Association of Art Museum Curators uh, for her re of the Utah Museum of Fine Arts American and Regional Art Galleries. It's a huge, huge award. She was featured with some other very prestigious galleries from across the country. Let's talk to her now. Leslie, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Great, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. So let's talk about what this award means to um, not only you, uh, but to the Utah Museum of Fine Arts. I gotta start with congratulations, first off. Well, thank you very much. Um, I am, am blessed to have this opportunity uh, for the UMFA to, to speak about our amazing collection and the work that we're doing at the UMFA. I think that it's on par with our, our colleagues in other major cities, and so I'm glad that there's some recognition of the work that we're doing. Absolutely, and, and we were kind of speaking about it during the break that how lucky we are to be in a city uh, the size of Salt Lake City and have some of the best art in the country featured here in Salt Lake City. I mean, some of the, be the best work that you can see, especially focused on kind of our regional tastes here, uh, uh, specifically the Intermountain West and specifically kind of Southwestern style art. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit about um, kind of w how you structured this new gallery to, to, to make that, that it won an award? Sure. Well, when I arrived at the UMFA, I noted that the collections of Native American art and regional art were really separate from the story of American art. And my approach has been to tell a more cohesive story, a more um, inclusive story. So really, there is um, a narrative that focuses on westward expansion, including works by artists who typically were not folded into the story of American art. And to really spotlight um, works by underrepresented art, for instance, there, there, um, it was very difficult to become an artist if you were a woman in the 19th century. Absolutely. And so we're making um, really an, a, a stronger attempt to showcase that work and also to make acquisitions. The exhibition opened in August, and if you think you saw it and know it, um, when the museum reopened, it's changed a little bit since then. We've rotated works into the galleries. For instance, a brand new pair of acquisitions by Monia Lewis, who is a 19th century artist, the first African-American artist to gain international recognition. Wow. So it seems like the focus here, as you said, is to really kind of um, tune in and hone in on some art and, and artists that were very, uh, maybe some prominent artists of their times, but very under-recognized. Uh, maybe they had some of the, the best talent and skills of their era, but they were not represented in terms of who was dominant in the art industry in that era. Uh, it was, I'm sure, very hard for them to break through and get their art featured or, or placed anywhere, really. So is this kind of some of the first time this art has been showcased in, in a gallery? Um, well, uh, for certain examples, yes. And there have been other or other figures um, who have received some attention, but not nearly enough. And a good example of that is Harriet Richard Harwood, who is married to J.T. Harwood, a very important Utah artist, very well known. Um, and on the very first wall, when you enter the galleries, there's uh, the kind of canonical Utah piece, the first work accepted in Paris Salon, Preparation for Dinner by JT. And then alongside it is a work, a still life by his wife, who was equally as talented um, and, and really a brilliant artist. Uh, created within the same year as Preparation for Dinner. Wow. And actually, both of them were on view in 1893 at the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition. Wow, so they were both featured there. It just seems that JT became a little bit more recognized for the work that he did, especially locally here as a Utah artist. So really putting his wife on the map as well and showing that not only was it the men here in the <laughs> state creating great work, it was the women as well. Um, and so that's really awesome. So what, what opportunities does this provide to the, the local here in the community to, to see some really awesome art? I mean, I think that uh, this, uh, this exhibition and the award uh, raises the profile a bit of the museum, so hopefully we, we are um, visited much more by our local audience, um, but also by, by people passing through Utah. And I, I hope, too, that um, we'll receive or, or be looked favorably uh, by, by funders and, and hopefully um, possible works of art coming to the museum. Absolutely, that'd be great. I think this 
this is, I think you, you said that very right. I think that hopefully this um, puts us on the map in terms of a, a destination, at least here in the Intermountain West, here in the West, as a destination for arts, um, not just for our own community, but for people passing through. And I agree, hopefully it does uh, bring the attention and draw the attention to Salt Lake City so that maybe other artists that would, would never be featured here in Salt Lake City considered to be, to be featured here. So let's learn a little bit more about the Utah Museum of Fine Arts. Um, how can people uh, get involved? How can they go check things out? Do they need tickets beforehand? Um, you can buy tickets at the museum. Um, please visit our website, um, umfa.utah.edu, um, and, uh, and follow us on social media. Awesome, and do, do you encourage people to, I mean, obviously you work there, so you gotta live it and love <laughs> it every day, but what do you have to say to the people that have maybe never experienced a fine art gallery like that, uh, and maybe who aren't so drawn in or tuned into art? I think that there's something for everyone at the MFA. We have such a really broad collection, and so I, I think that there's work that will resonate with, with anyone who comes in. We've also really worked to make um, the material that's presented, the interpretive material, really approachable using um, not just uh, jargon, okay. um, <laughs> I see. But, but really approachable language, um, making it uh, accessible. If you prefer to read, think, and speak in Spanish, there are bilingual labels. Wow, that's awesome. So so it's, it's for everyone. Well, that's great. Leslie, thank you so much for not only all you do at the Utah Museum of Fine Arts, but thanks for coming up here and uh, sharing all this great uh, news and information with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And congratulations again. That's a huge, huge award there for you. Be sure and visit Leslie over at the Utah Museum of Fine Arts. You can find out more information at umfa.utah.edu. We'll be right back with much more right here on the Mountain Morning Show. Don't go anywhere.